Hi everyone, welcome back to Cricketbat Info. I'm Mark, and today what we'll be doing is a brand new Cricketbat. Now this bat's been sent in by Nick, and it's a grey nickels. And I've actually got a few grey nickels coming up over the next few weeks, so I'll be spacing out uh, some of the reviews so you sort of have a little bit of a break from them. This is a bat that he's purchased from Greg Chapel Cricket Centre. So it's one of their specific ones. The retail price there is $735. He actually paid $550. I had a look on there and that's the current pricing. Uh, you can see here it comes in a full length cover. Nick plays for Para Hills Cricket Club. And my old mate Jabin, uh, he plays there as well. We both played at uh, Hectorville for many, many years. That's the shape. This is very much reminiscent of handmade cricket shapes that Grey Nichols Australia produces. It reminds me a lot in just the general shape and look of it of my own GN Ultimate. But the big difference with this bat is it's got a long handle, short blade combination. We'll have a look at the length of the blade and that's coming in at 53 centimeters standard blade is 55 i think so this is definitely a cent a couple of centimeters shorter than a standard blade handle is there the handle feel is semi oval all the way through it's actually quite a decent thickness this particular bat has a za stamp so this one's made in india uh, and if i roll back the uh, handle here you'll see that this has traditional binding it's got some numbers up here it looks like the actual grip has fallen uh, slipped down it's, it's because it's a standard length grip but this is actually a longer handle so this would be a standard long handle uh, style so you know if you're holding this you'll probably hold it a couple of centimeters up from the neck now I can remember uh, using this style of bat. I once bought a, oh, many, many years ago, B3 had a special on custombats.co where you could order some of their, their special shapes and they were delivered in Butterfly Willow. Uh, and I ordered to be cheeky, I got a long handle. And what I actually did, uh, because it was, you know, overall longer, I chopped the, the, the bottom of the toe off and made it into a short blade. Now I used that uh, that season and the last game of the season uh, I copped a rising delivery on hard wicket. We played on turf but it was one game on hard wicket. Um, caught me right on the top of the thumb. Uh, I think they call that mallet thumb or something like that. Right on the tip of the, the, the uh, thumb and that thumb actually didn't uh, recover for another year or so. Um, thankfully the team was pretty happy because I didn't ask to bowl anymore uh, but I still have some clicking and carrying on in that but I think it sort of squashed all the ligaments that's the only issue I have with uh, uh, short blade designs is that I had a personal <laughs> thing with them uh, but I really loved the idea of them you know that this started with the mongoose um, which had that sort of short blade and everybody has had their variation on it so this is a variation that um, Greg Chapel Cricket Centre has worked with GN to produce and I think it's great that they're doing something that's both traditional and also something that's a bit radical um, so yeah it's a nice looking piece of willow $875 in this tiny little sticker here and then it's got a member price of $735 but he actually paid $550 so I don't know what year this came out the stickers themselves look like something from a couple of seasons ago with the with the squared off thing. So this might be a couple of seasons. Hey, it's Marky. I just went searching on the Internet Archive Wayback Machine. Um, Greg Chapel Cricket Centre have a specific page for GN Evolution. So when I bought that page up, I can see all the different copies that the Wayback Engine has saved. And the most recent was this one here, which is the 19th of April 2020. This is when the Evolution RE was 575, which is when he purchased it. So he would have purchased it in the end of postseason runout sales. They're not selling this bat this season. When I click on this link, it takes me to this page here, uh, which doesn't have the updated price. Um, 
and it says the availability then. I don't know if this is in stock anymore, I doubt it. Finest grade one willow, mid to low sweet spot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, actually, I'll just leave this link here in the description. You can go and have a look at that yourself. Shape, it does definitely remind me of my own uh, Grey Nichols um, Ultimate. Uh, the one that I used to do comparison tap-ups with, you'll see in older reviews. The only difference was that had a square toe, and this has a traditional round toe, which I do like. Um, and I think that the thing about that is, is that you're going to be definitely trying to swing hard with this bat. The short blade, long handle combination is definitely going to give you a bigger lever to work with. And it makes the bat pick up really light for its actual weight. So even though this says 210, I wouldn't be surprised in my hands this feels more like a 2.5 to 2.9. Um, and probably, you know, if you went and put an extra grip on it or made this thicker, it would probably feel even lighter than that. But yeah, the, that is a typical Kranzbuehler shape uh, as far as all that wood is in that uh, position, which is a mid-low, uh, mid-low towards mid. So yeah, that's basically what's going on here. This is definitely a bat you're going to be coming down trying to drive and dominate the bowler. Um, you don't really want to be playing too much short stuff with a a short uh, blade bat. Let's have a look at the actual dimensions. Starting here, shoulder is about 14. Top of the splice, 38.6. Edge, 40.5. Toe, remember that's a round toe, so it comes up a bit more. 20.7. Center of the toe, 31.1. That does have a spine toe, so that is actually, that spine runs all the way down through the toe. Width, it's never normally an issue. 107.8, so perfect. And we didn't do the spine, so we'll measure that. I imagine we're looking at about uh, 64 or something like that. 64.7. So it's really decent dimensions. Put it through the gauge so you can have a look at that. Uh, and you can see as I push that up, we've got a little bit of a gap there at the top. Probably sacrificing 3mm at the top there. And that face camber is about four millimeters rather than five. There's a tiny little gap there. Um, but really like the fact that the edges are properly boned. There's no sharp edges. They're not trying to make this look like a bigger edge. It's already 40 centimeters, so they're not trying to make it bigger than it needs to be. Uh, but you've got tons of wood in that shape. So I do like that. So I'll just do a pickup test off camera. Because of that big lever, this feels nothing like 210 if that's what it is. It feels like a 28. Uh, it's got incredible pickup and it's got what I think plenty of wood in the, in the hitting area. So that's one of the big benefits you get from that losing all that wood here. Um, and uh, it definitely makes the bat pick up really nice having that long handle set up. Let's see what it actually weighs. And to 10.9, it's, it's nothing like that. It feels 2.9 and it's nearly 2.11. That's pretty incredible. Put an extra grip on it. Um, you know, you might be looking at 2.13, but it will feel nothing like that. So that is really, really nice. Uh, and because it's that much weight, um, it's definitely going to uh, have plenty of performance. So let's tap it up, starting at the toe. Yeah, in that low position, it's already going. Right in the guts. Plenty there. And the whole thing goes. It's going up here. So, yeah, it's, it's a huge middle. Nice piece of wood. Did I count the grains? One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine grains. It's probably grade one. Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice. And typical grey nickels press um, is, you know, spot on. Uh, 
I really like the way that Grey Nickels press their bats. They really press to perform. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, well done to uh, Greg Chapel Cricket Centre. Um, don't know what their one is for the coming season, uh, but that's a really nice uh, setup for somebody looking for a nice attacking bat for the short form of the game. Uh, you're going to come out maybe lower order, um, six, seven. You're not going to have too many balls to face. You're going to be attacking. This is a brilliant bat for that. Uh, and it's definitely going to give you your full range of shots because that incredible pickup. So thank you very much, Nick, for, uh, for sending that in. Um, really nice bat. Local player. And it's great to see um, local players because I get to they get to come in and we have a chat together and, and things like that. So, yeah, really nice. This has been Mark from Cricket Bat Info. If you like what I do, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We're obviously, as we head into the new Australian cricket season, we're going to see some nice new models come through. Uh, but I'm also going to be showing you some, some really classic bats from the last two decades. And if collectors do want to approach me with uh, unusual bats that, that people would want to see, please reach out. But I'm definitely not somebody who knows all the stories. And, and things like that. I'll just sort of comment on the bet that's in front of me. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.